In this session, we'll explore a way to manage vertical curve labels using child label styles. On my screen, I've got a fairly large profile view. Let's zoom in. In this view, I have a pair of profiles. This one represents the existing ground center line for a road called Main Street. And this one represents the finished grade center line for Main Street. If we back up, we can see that the finished grade profile contains several vertical curves, both crest and sag. Let's zoom in on the middle. I would like to split this profile view right in the middle of this vertical curve. If I pan this up, we can see that the curve exists right around station 23 plus 00. Let me back up and we'll pan down to the end. I'm going to split the profile view manually. I'll do that by launching the copy command. I'll select the view and right click. I will then pick a point on screen. I'll tap the F8 key to lock my ortho. I'll drag this over and click. I'll press escape when finished. So I now have two profile views. One's right here and the other one is sitting right on top of it. Let's change their properties. I'll click the first view and then I'll choose profile view properties from the contextual ribbon. Here on the stations tab, rather than using the automatic station range, which represents the full length of the alignment, I'm going to choose user specified range. I'll keep the default start station, but I'll take this down to 2300 and I'll click OK. If I zoom out, you can see that first profile view. Let me press escape and I'll select the other. We'll come back to profile view properties. And in this case, we'll define a user specified range that starts at 2300 and runs to the end of the current stationing. I'll click OK and I'll press Escape. There we go, we can see our pair of views. Now I'd like to add some profile labels to my copied view. I'll do that by selecting the profile and then from the ribbon I'll choose Edit Profile Labels. I'll select Import Label Set and then we'll import the complete label set. I'll click OK and OK. Let's do one more thing. I'd like to drag these vertical curve labels down. I'll start by selecting this crest label. Notice the other label is selected as well. I'll select the sag label and then I'm going to hold my shift key and I'll click each of these grips at the label location to make them hot. I will then remove my finger from the shift key. I'll click one of these grips and I will pull all of them down together. Then I'll press escape when finished. Finally, we'll zoom in on this split vertical curve. The view on screen is typical of what you might see when multiple profile views are created for plan and profile sheets. Now on occasion, I've been asked if it's possible to remove some of this vertical curve data at the location of a split. While this information is accurate, there was a concern that having the arrowhead and the labels here may create confusion that the vertical curve actually ended or started at the location of these arrowheads. So what we'll do is create some quick styles to eliminate the unwanted labels. First we'll find out what style is being used. I'll do that by selecting one of the labels. I will then right click and I'll choose Edit Labels from the menu. This shows me the current label set. This identifies the label style applied to all of the geometry in this profile. From here we can see that the same style is applied to both crest and sag curves. To take a look at that style I will click on it and then I'll select the price tag. From here I will click the Edit button. In the style, I'll select the Layout tab. This is where we'll find the components that make up that label style. I'm going to click in this preview on the right, and then I'll pan this over and zoom in, just like we do in Civil 3D, and I'll center it on one of these labels. I will then open the component list, and you can see the number of components that make up this label style. Now, if you're wondering what each of these components controls, you can select one. For instance, I've selected Curve Data, and then you can change its visibility to False making it very easy to see that that component controls these four labels. Let me turn that back on. So if this was a split label and it was labeling the start of the vertical curve, I'd want to hide this arrowhead, I'd want to hide these end of vertical curve labels and this line. Well, if I open the component list, if I come down, right there's the end arrow. Let me check that. Yes, I can turn that off. Here's the end of vertical curve station. I could turn that off. I could do the same thing with the end of vertical curve elevation, and I could turn off the line segment. However, I don't want to make the changes with this style because this is the style that's applied to all the vertical curves. Now that we've seen how easy it is to make these changes, I'm going to hit cancel, and then rather than editing this current style, I'm going to click the small flyout here, and I'll choose Create Child of Current Selection. A child is simply a copy that is linked to the original style. In the child, I can override as many of the original settings as I like, and if the original style is ever modified, those changes will propagate to the child style, so long as they haven't been overridden. 
This will be the label style that we use for the start of the vertical curves. So we'll call this HP and LP start. I will then jump to the layout tab. Let's click in the preview and we'll zoom in. From here, I am going to hide the end line. I will hide the end arrow. We'll hide the end of vertical curve station. And we'll hide the end of vertical curve elevation. Perfect. Let's click OK. We'll create another child style. Now I'm not going to click the child button just yet because I would be adding a child to my previous child style. Instead, I'll open the menu and I'll select the parent. And then we'll make a new child. We'll use this label style for the end of the vertical curve. I will then go to Layout. We'll zoom in on one of these. So for the ends, I don't want to see the start arrow. I don't want to see the start line. I don't want to see the begin vertical curve station. And I don't want to see the begin vertical curve elevation. That looks good. Let me click OK. And then finally, I'm not going to click OK here. That's because it would apply this style to all the crest curves, and I don't want to do that. Instead, let me flip this back to the parent style, and then I'll click OK. And I'll click OK when finished. So at this point, I have defined two new custom styles that are based on the original vertical curve label style. Next, we'll look at how we can apply those styles to these specific labels. Let me zoom out. If I select a crest label, you can see that it selects all of the crest labels in that profile view. I don't want to do that. Let me press Escape. Instead, I'll hold my Control key and select this label. That selects that label only. I will then go over to my Properties palette. And then, rather than using the default profile curve label, the one defined in the label set, I would rather use my new Start label style. I'll press Escape when finished. Let's pan this over. I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll hold the control key and click to select this label only. We'll go to properties and rather than using the default style, we'll use our new end child style and I'll press escape when finished. As you can see, the vertical curve label now appears split, much like the profile view itself. Let's zoom out and I'll center this on screen. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to show you one more thing. Let's take a look at where these styles exist on the settings tab. I'm going to jump to that tab in the tool space. I will then drag this out to make it a little easier to see. Let's come down to Profile, Label Styles, Curve. Here we can see the original vertical curve label style that we started with. Notice this style is now expandable. If I click the plus, we'll find the two child styles we just created. At this point, you may be wondering if it's possible to create children here on the Settings tab. We can certainly do that. Normally, if we right-click on the category and choose New, we can create a new style. Let me press Escape. If you right-click on a style and choose New, you'll be creating a child. So you can also create the children over here. Let me close this. One last thing, let's test the parent-child relationship. We'll do that by editing the parent style. I'll right-click on the parent style name and choose Edit. Let's jump to the Layout tab, and as an example, we'll take the curve data, which represents the labels right here, and we will push those up. We'll set this to maybe 0.5. And when I click Apply, you can see how the curve data jumped up on every vertical curve label, including the ones using the child label styles. Let's drag this back up, and I'll put things back the way they were. We'll set this to 0.025. I'll click Apply. OK and then we'll zoom back in on our split. The key takeaway here is that child styles can be a quick way to create derivatives or variations of a label style. They also make it much easier to perform global edits to your label styles in the future. In this example, we used them with a vertical curve label. That being said, they will work with virtually any Civil 3D label style. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.